Hi, this is Dan Petrock. Thought I'd make a short video to show how our inclusive access is kind of run and done and our math classes uh, might help some of you that are um, thinking about doing it or are going to do it in the future. Um, so I just started on the schedule just to make you see what it looks like for a student. Um, when students come to any class, it's inclusive access. They usually have two things. They have a link here. It says publisher materials in the description. And when I click on that, Kind of shows here's the reasons why it's good, what you get. Essentially, it's telling them uh, you're prepaying, um, you have you can use your financial aid. Uh, there's a print companion that goes along with it that you can get from the bookstore. Um, uh, there's Here's the examples right here, some of the courses that we do have it. Um, so there's a little uh, kind of a rationale behind it. Uh, the goal is uh, to get it much cheaper than they can get it, honestly, anywhere else. Um, so here's some of our prices that they get uh, in a lot of these have uh, my a uh, my lab code or um, some online homework plus the ebook as well um, also when they click on over here at books it'll say something about a, a required digital product like this uh, but it says right here um, it's course materials are including your course charge uh, contact your campus store for more information so pretty much it's saying uh, this is already included. I think they just broke it out into the two different parts. Um, so the cool thing is when they buy this, they, they're buying the copyright. So that's why the print companions are so cheap. Um, but so pretty much they, and then if they drop the course, it automatically gets credited back. Uh, so you don't have to worry about returns ever um, as well. So if you go into course, um, I'll just go into one from the, my, my class this summer. So in the course content, uh, start here folder, pretty much they're all going to have something similar to this. Uh, they're going to have a code already in there. Uh, that code is good only for the ter this term. Um, so that code changes three times a year for spring, fall, and summer. It also um, uh, will be automatically updated. Uh, Sean Frommel has been doing this for every section for every course so far. There's a lot of work, but he does all of it. Make sure this is updated. Um, Usually, if you are using a, a mastering or MyLab or some kind of online homework, you usually like to have a link to some component to force the students to put that code in right away. Um, a lot of times we're advocating using the, the ebook from the publisher. And then um, uh, the, the bookstore also has a red shelf book. Um, so this is what we've been using for what we call perpetual access. Students can access the course after. Uh, the course is over. There's um, been a lot of research that's showing that students don't actually access these, and this may be something that uh, we may not have to do in the future. Uh, but right below that, there is an opt-out form. So this is if students feel like uh, they don't want to buy this. Um, and usually the only reason that might be uh, if they already had a code maybe from before um, that, that they couldn't return or something. And usually these opt-out forms, when they click, I'll just click on that. So a form they fill out with their student ID, and it automatically sends an email to um, the bookstore, uh, I think also to billing, also to the professor. So they can kind of flag and go, okay, so why are you doing this again? Uh, so when we had some unique cases like that, usually we work out with them one-on-one. -on -one. Sometimes the publisher rep will take care of the student as far as uh, maybe exchanging their code. Um, so uh, that's, that's about the, the only reason. I think we've had almost zero opt-outs these last few terms. Um, so that kind of answers that. I think the, the contract we have right now is if a student retakes the course, they have to repurchase the code. Uh, that lowered the price more um, for the, I think there was only a handful of students that were doing the retakes. Um, so we just spread that cost out to every student. Um, during the initial rollout, uh, usually the old the old agreements where the codes were good for like a year or even two, um, so usually that's where the publisher will work individually with students if they've if they're retaking it before they've done inclusive access. Um, inclusive access does require a custom course to be built, so that unique code will work with them, and that's when faculty uh, will all have to work from uh, a common custom course, and then they can always add assignments and modify it from that point forward. Um, and uh, so when you're going into a course and you're going to you're going to add it, um, it'll have kind of a unique situation and your your lead faculty will usually have the access code or the, the course ID you should use to copy. So 
uh, working off a little questions uh, that I've gotten in emails. I'm just trying to see if I've answered most of them. Uh, so the retakes are typically moving forward. They got to purchase the code every time they take the course, uh, just like they have to repay for the tuition every time they take the course. Um, let's see here. Uh, da, 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 da. Do instructors get access to the course? Uh, so usually, if typically there's a lead faculty that will share a course ID with everyone, um, but then you can always import uh, stuff you want into there. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and let's see here. I think that's about it. I'm not sure what else you might want to know, um, but pretty much as far as the faculty members concerned, they just need to make sure they set up their their mastering or my lab or online homework uh, correctly. Make sure they copy the right course ID um, and do like they've done in the past. They don't have to ever worry about the code. They don't have to put the code in the syllabus. Uh, students are authenticated through Blackboard, so they don't have to worry about course IDs or anything because they know which course is associated. Uh, they can also link it to their gradebook um, the online homework system. So as far as the faculty is concerned, it, this reduces a whole bunch of headaches. No need for hospitality codes anymore. No need for, for all of those things. Uh, don't have to wait to get started. Students have it on day one. And um, yeah, so I hope this little video answers a lot of your questions. Uh, be glad to help if there's anything else I can do.